Okay, so as usual, we're going to begin by duplicating our background layer, and then we're going to head over to the filters, and then you're going to need something called the camera raw filter. And actually, I'm not entirely sure that you don't need to download this, but if you do, there will be a link in the description for it. So as soon as this comes up, you'll see that it's actually almost identical to the Lightroom sets that you toy with in the Lightroom program. And it's actually, it's very similar. It's basically the same thing, it's just an extension added onto Photoshop. And if you have Lightroom, then you can complete this step using Lightroom. So it's your choice, I just personally like having it downloaded, and just go by your preference. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is take a lot of the warmth out of the picture because if you haven't noticed in Brandon's photos it's a lot of cool and electric tones and there's hardly ever any oranges or yellows or any of those warm tones so in order to take those out we're going to mess with the temperature first it really varies depending on the image but typically you're going to lower it you know just about so that most of the warm tones are taken out but it's not overly iced looking and then you can even adjust the purple and green slider for the tint to add it a little more towards the purple side and take out some of those green tones. Okay, so now we're going to take the exposure up just a little bit, it depends on your image, and then we're going to bring the contrast down quite a bit, and the reason being is that in Brandon's photos you can see a lot of the detail within the shadows, and not a lot is hidden in his pictures, so the contrast being down is a very important element in this style of editing. After that, we're going to go to the hue and saturation scales, and there is really no set way to do this. Basically, all you have to know is that based on your image, you have to pull out those warm tones and bring everything into those cooler purple and blue tones. So every single step that you take when you play with these settings, because there's a lot that you can play with, should be aimed towards pulling out the warm tones, desaturating them, and then bringing in the cool tones and the electric purples and blues. So you're, you're gonna mess around with the hue and the saturation, but the important thing to remember is not to overdo it on anything, especially in the saturation because you'll see that when I pull the reds too high, it creates kind of this rashy looking blotchiness on the subject and that just looks kind of unhealthy and you don't want anything looking too grainy. So. At that point, you're going to want to take down the reds and the oranges and the greens and bring up the blues and the aquas and the magnetas and the purples. So you can see how this doesn't exactly look very Brandon-y yet, and I can see how you'd be discouraged because I was discouraged, but it really just takes a lot of toying with and playing around with. So you actually have to do this twice in order to get the desired effect, and you're just kind of stacking that color effect. So just go back into the filter. Um, you don't necessarily have to toy with exposure or contrast unless you want to. It really just depends on your picture. But I went through and I just kind of redid the exact same adjustments to see if I could, you know, pull out those colors a little bit more. I even toyed with the white balance and stuff like that later on, you'll see. And the vibrance can be key here. You see how I toyed with the vibrance, vibrance a little bit. It actually helps a lot if you bring up the vibrance if that's the desired effect that you would like. Okay, so now it definitely looks quite a bit closer to what you were aiming for. And the final touches, really, you're just gonna go into the brightness and the contrast, and you're gonna mess with those just a little bit more and see when I brighten it up, it really starts looking like it and you just want a lot of light packed into this picture. That's why you have her next to the natural kind of window light, you have the fairy lights, and on top of that, you're upping the brightness. And the contrast, you know, I said earlier to bring it down, and sometimes you might want to bring it up towards the end, but it really, I brought it down a little bit more. And so, after that, I played with the vibrance a little bit more also, just to bring out the colors some more, and then you can just look and see what happens when you mess with it in the saturation and bring it up or down. Eventually you'll settle on something that you like, because what's important is developing your own style, even if you're messing with somebody else's and being satisfied with your picture. Um, here's where I was talking about the levels. You really don't need to bring in a lot more blacks, but whites kind of 
bring out a little bit more of those highlights and so those are okay to mess with. It's your image, do whatever you want with it. And then after that comes the bokeh and the reflections that you often see and typically you can do this in camera using like prisms and I heard that Brennan like reflects DVDs next to the lens and that's really interesting but that can all be achieved in Photoshop. So what I did was I got a bokeh pack of images from a website called Brush Easy. I'll put the link in the description and you can download a series of them and they're very easy to use and I'll show you how in just a moment. So by hitting Command or Control J, depending on your computer, you're going to duplicate the layer so that you're able to move it and then use your move tool and bring it to the image. And then once you place it in your image, it's very important, you're going to change the blending mode to screen because it'll take the black and those tones out of it. And you'll see it has kind of this white extra in there that where you can see the shape of the image, but we're going to take that out. So really just focus on getting it how you want it to look and adjusting it in the shape, whatever. If you want to move it or grow or shrink it without distortion, hold down the shift key while you move it around. And then to get rid of that weird little aura there, we're gonna hit the mask button, make sure that your brush is on black. Make sure that your brush settings have the hardness all the way down so that you get a natural fading out kind of look. And then adjust your brush size to whatever size you would like in order to do this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lightly kind of brush around the edges and get rid of that edge so that you can't really tell that you dropped another image in there. Now while all of my suggestions are completely optional, I thought that this image lacked just a little bit of the hot pink tones that I liked, and I didn't necessarily do this in the final image that I showed at the beginning but you get your gradient tool, and then if there's a pink tone you want to use, I color dropped it, or you can find one that you like. And then I drew in just a little bit of gradient because I kind of liked having that extra edge into it. It's kind of like a color burn. Um, really, it's just a matter of preference. Thank you for watching this tutorial all the way to the end. Feel free to put your requests in the comments. Um, I'm pretty new to this whole YouTube thing, but I would love to continue if people need it, so. Have a nice day, guys.